Right then, is it worth buying the Mars Mate? I bought one, but because Elegoo don't seem to have sent these out to YouTubers, so I figured I'd just pick one up if for nothing more than to tell you what you want to know, does it actually work? Let's have a look then. Hi, I'm Ross and this is Fohammer Videos. So for a while now, Elegoo have been releasing 3D printers with removable vent holes on the back of the lids, and people have wondered what these are for. And yeah, up until now, you could have connected this up to your own ventilation system to pump smells and VOCs outside of your home. But it turns out that Elegoo may have been planning something all along, as this device is directly compatible with all the devices which house this removable vent hole cover, which oddly, despite its name, doesn't include all of the Mars series of printers. The flagship Mars 4 and Mars 4 Ultra don't have this vent hole. The DLP does, as does the Max, and so do some of the Saturns. But yeah, for a device called the Mars Mate, it won't actually be much of a mate with most of your Marses because it won't work with more than half the Mars range, especially when you include the older devices that are still available. Unless, of course, you drill your own holes. So with this, like with all of Elegoo's printers, Unboxing is as easy as just sliding it out upright. The unit's really lightweight at around 5 kilos, and it's quite small too at only 210 by 247 by 410 millimeters. So it's about the size and footprint of a normal Mars printer. The unit unclips at the side and splits into two parts, and all of the electronics and controls are in the lid. The base is just a plastic housing to hold the vent inlet hose and the gigantic activated carbon block. And according to the website, each of these carbon blocks should last about two months of operation. Although here I am now, nearly two months after the release of these, and you can't actually buy those replacement carbon blocks yet. The unit itself's got a built-in VOC sensor, and it'll warn you when its life is depleting with different color accent lights around the power button. It'll turn amber when the filter is coming to the end of its life, and red when it's completely depleted. Elegoo estimate this should be greater than 1400 operating hours and it'll turn red when the VOC concentration coming out of the filter is greater than 1.4 parts per million. Functionality wise, there's only four buttons. The power socket plugs into the back of the lid and the controls are on top. Power is quite an obvious function though you do need to hold it down for several seconds longer than you'd think in order to turn the unit off. The fan in the lid has two speeds which seems to be slow and very slow. Even at its fastest setting, it wasn't powerful enough to blow a single sheet of paper off the lid. Maybe this is by design, too fast and the carbon filter won't have time to absorb the VOCs, but I'll come back to that shortly. There's also an auto mode, which should adjust the fan speed dynamically, but when I had this enabled, the speed never shifted from its very slow operation. Getting this connected to your printer is really straightforward using the tools you got with the printer. You can just remove the vent hole cover and install the hose mount that comes with the mate. It's just four bolts and it's on, it's nice and simple. And the devices are linked together using the connector hose. This is similar to the type of flexible hoses that you'll get on a vacuum cleaner. This will stretch up to three meters in length, but I just put mine directly next to the printer. Both ends of this are compression fit into both the printer mount and the matching mount on the Mars mate. It's not too tight and everything is held in place with a large rubber gasket. Keeping the hose installed at all times does make the printer lids quite unwieldy, so it's a good idea to disconnect it before shifting stuff like the lid about. And it's all been quite well thought out for simple installation, connection and accessibility. But does it actually do anything to help with pollutants? Well, to help me test this, I bought a Temtop LKC 1000S Plus, and I've spent a few weeks figuring out how they work. And there were two types of these available on Amazon, and they both had decent ratings. With no idea how they work, I got the more expensive one. And there is a very basic video online explaining its operation features and what they mean, sort of. And this does quite a few things. It measures air particles the size of 2.5 and 10 microns. It measures total VOCs in the air and the amount of formaldehyde, which you'll see by its chemical structure designation, HCHO. And using this data, you get an AQI or air quality index rating, and each function on the device clearly indicates when the environment is good, moderate, or unhealthy. But with some further testing, I was able to push it to hazardous, a designation that wasn't even mentioned in the usage video. So maybe I should stop vaping. But anyway, it's the VOCs I want to be looking at most here. When it comes to using this device, it's advised that you leave it in a well-ventilated space 
for six hours after you remove it from the box in order to calibrate it. So after doing this, I started getting measurements, including outside. I live in a fairly rural area on the edge of a town and have pretty decent air quality. I took my first measurements of the printer directly out the back of the unit after removing the vent hose. VOC has reached a value of 0.53, which is very marginally into the moderate status of pollutants. Before doing another test, I left it to rest for a few hours so that any VOCs in the air from the first test can actually settle. So on my next print, I placed the detector on top of the mate and turned it on. At this point, the detector rapidly shot up to 0.6, which is still at the low end of moderate. But I left the mate on for a while with the detector next to my printer in between the two devices and it got as high as 0.92. And at this point, we're getting almost halfway to the unhealthy category. When the mate was turned off though, the sensor slowly dropped down and settled around 0.9. But when I took the lid off the printer, the detector went all the way up to 1.2. So it's definitely picking up more nasties in the air when it's directly next to a working printer. Now it's interesting to see that even with the lid off, this is still recorded as a moderate environment, though it should be clear by now, I'm just reading numbers off a device that I only slightly understand. I'm no scientist. So to try some comparable tests, I put this next to my hob in the kitchen and saw a reading of 0.7. I intentionally burned some toast, which got me some incredibly high readings, but for the majority of the time, the toast was smoking and the detector was fine. I had to literally shove it in the smoke before it started picking anything up. My wife actually noticed long before this detector did. Once I had that reading though from the smoke, it calmed down to around 0.6 within five minutes. So I guess 3D printer fumes are about as harmful as burnt toast, but it's not like you're sat with toast burning fumes all day. And look, I'm not here to determine how harmful 3D printers are, the truth is, I don't know, and the more I look into it, the more I read opinion pieces from they're killing us to the chemical quantities in them are so small during UV reactions, they're negligible. I don't have the skill, knowledge, experience, or qualifications to share my views in this area. None of my videos are to be taken as professional advice, but I would suggest you follow the recommended guidelines everyone else spouts of making sure your printers are used in well-ventilated areas and you're using the correct PPE. Now, because I was uncertain and getting these results, I asked Elegoo how they tested these to verify that VOCs are removed, and I got the answer that's on screen now. And I can only presume that this testing is what led to the claim on their website that the device has a 95% TVOC purifying rate and got them a silver accolade in Muse Design Awards of 2023. I don't actually know what that is. But in my testing, my device showed me the mate was pumping more VOCs into the air than just having the small vent hole open. Keep the lid on the printer and the VOCs drop. So honestly, I feel safer just keeping a sealed lid on my printers and only letting the VOCs into the air when I take it off to remove a print. Am I wrong? I'd love to hear from you guys if you know more than me, but this result seems fairly definitive. Carbon filters, no matter how big or small they are, don't seem to do anything to help reduce VOCs. Smells, sure, but that's about all. If you can think of any further testing I can do or environmental challenges I may have to overcome, then please let me know down in the comments. I want to say thanks for watching and thanks to our members for supporting the channel. Without you, we would not be growing as fast as we are. If you aren't subscribed, please make sure you do to help us get that silver play button. Drop a comment below for the algorithm, and I do aim to answer all questions I'm asked. Until next time, if you can't be good, at least be kind. Fohammer out.